everybody and welcome back to the blues not channel today i am back with another match preview as i'll be previewing the only midweek game that we will have this week in mls and coincidentally the only midweek game that we have in this match week number 12 in mls involve my san jose earthquakes as they will be playing against the vancouver whitecaps on the row now obviously the quakes finally ended the longest winless streak in MLS last week as they finally beat Minnesota United 3-1 and in that process they also got their first ever row win since last year of May when we beat FC Dallas 1-0 and certainly the players are going to be feeling very confident coming into this game. Now despite that we do have to quickly turn around as like I said, we are playing this midweek game on the road against the Vancouver Whitecaps. And the Whitecaps, well, they are kind of in a very similar situation as we are right now. You know, they have been really, really bad in these last couple of games. I think they have now gone five of their last six games without a win. And certainly the fans are not happy with the product that the Whitecaps have been putting. And they want their manager to get out of that club so this is certainly one of the best chance that we can play against the Whitecaps when they are in a very bad form right now now the other thing that I think it will give us a lot of a bit of an advantage in this game is that we have done pretty decently against the Whitecaps on the road and we have walked out of BC place with some points in the in the past recently I mean if you ignore what happened last last year in the playoffs where we got spanked five nothing uh we actually have got points out of bc play in three straight matches in in these last couple of game when we play the white caps there so certainly i'm definitely confident that we can definitely get some points and like i said because they're in such a bad form right now i kind of expect us to get some points you know i won't expect that the fact that this team really need to get three points in this game but if they can at least get a point out of this game and come back to via stadium uh with that four point road trip then it will definitely be a very successful road trip now having said that certainly points is something that we really need right now considering the fact that this is pretty much the easiest stretch that we are going through right now this season i mean you know after this white caps game we play against dc united at home and that certainly is an absolute must win because dc united is just as bad as we are right now and then after that we go on the road against the la galaxy and you know the quakes always tend to be up for that game whenever they play the galaxy in the cali classico and the fact that the galaxy are just really really bad right now too and they are also in a very bad form and then even after the la galaxy game we go on the road to play against the chicago fire that has just been really inconsistent this year at home and also on the road so this is a very easy stretch that we are on right now and i expect that by the end of May, we should be finding ourselves above the red line. We should, like right now in the Western Conference, if you look at the standing right now, we are not really that far away from the, the um, above the red line. If we just can put some kind of good, good winning streak or good run that we have, have right now in, in May, then we can potentially be up there in the standing and right up there above the red line by the end of May but first of all we got to take care of business against the Vancouver Whitecaps and obviously one thing that we got to watch out for in this game against the Whitecaps is the transitional kind of attack that they use I mean the Whitecaps are probably the best known team as a team that always play on the counter attack and the number one thing that we cannot do in this game and that we have been doing throughout this season is to give the ball away in our own having give the ball away in a very bad position because if we do that it is game over I mean the Whitecaps are just gonna capitalize this time after time because that is literally their bread and butter and I know for a fact that in this game we're going to have majority of the possession and that is one thing that we also need to need to figure it out is that 
we're going to get majority of the possession but it's also how we are going to do with that possession we need to try to break down this white caps defense which at times this white cap defense does get very organized and very compact and i have seen this season that the quakes whenever they do get majority of the possession they always tend to have problems trying to break teams down so that's one thing that we got to to watch out for and that's one thing that we need to do in this game if we're going to walk out bc place again with at least a point or even all three points in this game now in terms of course the players that we got to watch out for for the white caps obviously it has to be kai kamara i mean kai kamara is literally the difference between the white caps have to heavily rely on their counter-attacking kind of style or they can use this plan b which is just somehow play the ball into kai kamara and he will basically work his magic of just get around a couple of defenders find some good space to put the ball into the back of the net and yeah that is a player that we got to watch out for and that is a player that you know we cannot let him have any single space because so far kai kamara this season he's been doing very well this season with the white caps and it's pretty clear that like i said the white caps are heavily relying on him because that is pretty much their only plan b that they have other than the transitional football that they always tend to play this season and also last season now in terms for the starting 11 for this game i decided to go with a very similar starting 11 from that game against minnesota the only change that i will make will be in that left back position but first in goal it is going to be andrew tarbell which you know i thought tarbell had another decent game against minnesota he made a couple of very key save and once again he did not kick the ball out of bounds whenever he trying to take a goal kick or just trying to punt the ball up the field which is very good to see that he has finally improved in terms of his distribution of of uh those kind of kind of ball on the goal kick and on the on the free kick so yeah tarbell is going to be there and then in the left back it is going to be joel Kuiper instead of shea salinas and even though joel Kuiper clearly doesn't seem like he is good enough in that left back row judging by the fact that i've been hearing that he can't even beat out shea salinas in that left back position it's pretty clear that we I, I don't want to see Salinas back in that left back row again. I mean, in that last game against Minnesota, he basically just went back to his old form where he just, he was the reason why we conceded that goal right in the 26th minute. And at that time was the equalizer for Minnesota United as he just gave the, the ball away in a bad position. So instead, it's going to be Joel Kuiper in that left back row. And then in the center back partnership, it's going to be Cummins and Youngworth. And Youngworth, in my opinion, was the man of the match in that game against Minnesota. I'm not quite sure why they decided to give it to Wondolowski in that one. I mean, I get that he did kind of set up the winning goal in that game against Minnesota. And then he did score that crucial third goal. But I thought Youngworth was the man of the match because he was just everywhere in that defense i mean he was making some crucial challenges he was intercepting the ball and he basically just kind of carries the defense on his back once again i mean this is that has been something that he's been doing in the last couple of games and you know he clearly deserved to be the man of the match in that game because of that i mean if we didn't have him in that center back row we probably would have conceded more than one goal against minnesota now in terms of course the right back it is going to be nick lima and then in the holding midfield partnership it's going to be jackson yu and anabel godoy and godoy actually had a pretty decent game in the last match against minnesota and i think the reason why he kind of had a decent game was because he is feeling the pressure and feeling the heat from not only the fans but also the fact that he knows that if he continues the the way that he is playing right now which is really poor that he is going to get benched and that he is not going to be in that starting 11 and in that holding midfield game in and game out so it's good to see that he finally had pick it up and although he did make some some bad kind of fouls in that game which i'm hoping that he he needs 
he will improve in these next couple of games. He did the job what a holding midfield would do in that game against Minnesota. So Godoy and Yu is going to be in that, that holding midfield partnership. And then in the free central attacking mid, it's going to be Ericsson, Vako, and also Jameer Hika. And it's good to see that Hika did not suffer a very bad injury in that game against Minnesota because it looked like when he limped off the field it looked like it was a very bad injury that he will be out for an extensive time period of time and that would be pretty devastating because we really need to give Jameer Hika some minutes in this team it's pretty clear that you know he could be a player that can be like what he was last season which was he was doing very good with the team and he he, he was one of the the player that one of the difference maker on our attack last season and that ever since this season for whatever reason we decide not to play him and that he, his form started to kind of did this integrate that we just need to give him some more minutes and this injury will definitely not help the case but fortunately this injury were not a long-term injury in fact it, it wasn't even an injury at all he was able to get back to training on um, the next couple of days after he suffered that injury and he will be available in that in this game against the white cap so Hika, Vako and Ericsson is going to be there in that free central attacking midfield trio and then up front it is going to be Danny Hooson which he scored another goal in that game against Minnesota and you know he started to sc finally start to find his scoring form a little bit i mean these last couple of games he has scored a goal and that is definitely good news for us because if Husin can score finally get his goal scoring form in then yeah he definitely can be a guy that can be a very kind of dangerous striker for us and he can definitely be the guy that we can use as a go-to guy to potentially score us the goals so that is the starting 11 that i am going to put for this game against the white caps and in terms of the prediction of this game you know like i said i don't expect this team to get a win in this a three points in this game is really not a must in this game consider we do have some some easy game in these next couple of matches and I might even consider this might be the toughest one out of these these next couple of games but it would definitely be good if we can get three points against a struggling Whitecaps team and because of that I am going to say that we are going to win this game by a final score of two to one and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash that subscribe button and let me know in the comments what your starting 11 and also the prediction is for this game and yeah I will see you guys next time